Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're back with another episode in the Speedster Vlogs. Heidi and I were out driving the car last weekend, and she said, hmm, I smell a little bit of burning oil, and she was right. I looked underneath there, and there's a bit of oil on the muffler, and I thought, that's kind of strange. But I thought back, I've been seeing a bit of oil in the tin down here, and also on the fan belt as well. So that's telling me that probably the seal on the pulley side on the crankshaft might be leaking a little bit. So that's going to be today's project. I'm going to, I've got a brand new seal here. So I'm going to pull off the, the pulley and see what we see besides there. So could be a bit of a thing. So let's get started. In order to get to the big nut on the end here, I'm gonna need to take this rod out, which is part of the carb heat system, and I'm gonna have to take the horns off. So we'll start with that. Maybe we might have to take this rear 10 piece out. I'm kinda of hoping we don't, but we probably, I don't know if we will or not. We'll have to see. over here. Now that we have a good clear access to that bolt on the back, I went out and bought a 30 millimeter, yeah still has a tag on, 30 millimeter wrench in order to get that thing off. Um, I've heard some crazy ideas in order to get this thing off. Now if you had, the, if you had it out of the car, you could just throw an impact wrench on it and just run it right off and it would come right off. That'd be great. I can't even get a socket on it. So I think the wrench will probably work. It should only be like 50 pound feet of torque or so, but a lot of people use a impact wrench to put those things on so they can be really, really tight. Here's a funny thing. Uh, I was reading in the registry and someone suggested that you can lay the wrench down, wrap it in a cloth, put a piece of wood underneath it, lay it on the tin, uh, put the car in neutral, and go and try and start the car. And the force from the starter into the flywheel is enough to kick that bolt loose. That seems really drastic and I can think of about 10 things that could possibly go wrong, including the wrench going flying all over the place. So I'm not going to use that method. Uh, if I have to, honestly, if it got down to that, I'd just take the engine out. It's just another half hour's worth of work to take the engine out. So let me see if we can get this thing off and just see how tight it is. I'm gonna put the car in gear and see if we can get this thing off. Try our there it goes. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. Well, it came loose really easily, which is great. Just a couple of hits from the uh, plastic hammer, it came loose. But I forgot about something. We need to take the fan belt off first, kind of duh, huh? So I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the bolt that's on the generator, and that'll be an easy way to get the the fan belt off. All right. There it goes. Okay. Boy, I sure do love these extendable wrenches. These things are so nice because I needed a bit of extra torque. I can make it really long, but it's still pretty tight in there. And when I'm done, collapse it right back up again, and I've got more movement. These things are awesome. Now, as you take this off, you want to make note, just in case things get a little mixed up, of how many washers you've got on the outside and how many are on the inside. Yeah, so this is our belt. Look how it's kind of shiny all over the place. Just tells me that it's kind of been getting a bit of oil on it. It's a little bit dirty as well. So I think we're on the right track. We'll see. So all the rest of our shims, there's a lot of them, huh? I'm just going to pull this off so I don't knock it off. The other thing I think I'm going to do is bang down these edges here. They're sharp and they're sitting up like that and they shouldn't be. So I'll go ahead and bang those down and then uh, hit it with a little file just to smooth it out a little bit. Well that looks a little bit better, huh? Not all wanky and sticking up like that. Now we can take this nut off the rest of the way. There's a big floppy washer here behind it. There's our bolt. 
Looks like somebody's ground the end off of it, huh? Floppy washer looks to be in good shape. I don't see any splits or cracks in it. Bolt looks good. The threads look good. With the crankshaft bolt off, uh, next step's going to be to get that pulley off. Could be a thing, maybe, who knows. So let's see what we've got. There we go. All right, there we go. There we go. Yay. All right. Well, we want to inspect this edge here. Actually, to be honest, I'm not seeing much oil back here, huh? Well, that's interesting. You know, I do see some oil on this surface here and there, but nothing on the outside of the actual pulley. Hmm. It's interesting, huh? Well, I'm not seeing anything super obvious. Kind of confused, at least, at this point. <laughs> Seems like that happens a lot, huh? Um, I think what I'm going to do is remove the rear tin that's back here and the piece that's actually on the other side, the engine side of the pulley and see if we can see anything else, see if there's any more indication as to what's going on in there. You know, upon further inspection of this, take a look at that right there. There's a big notch on this seal, and that shouldn't be there. So my guess is that is the cause of our leak. And it's coming out there, rolling down this way, and then falling down. So it looks like we are going to have to get that seal out. There's a nice notch here to help get the seal out. I think that's going to be pretty sweet. There we go. All right, that seal's out. Yeah, I think our seal is no good. Well, certainly no good anymore. I got it out, but it was super easy to get out because of that notch that's in there, which is awesome. Um, you just sort of dent it and it comes right out. This bit goes in here, so it came out, but there's, um, it's pretty hard to see, but there's the notch right there that was in the seal. So I think that's what's causing our problems. We are dripping a little bit of oil here. It's not the end of the world. It's a teeny bit there. Now the question is going to be how do we get the new seal in properly? Feeling around the shaft here. It feels great. That feels awesome. Probably want to clean this out really well. Make sure there's no debris or anything in there. I have our new seal here all ready to go. Pretty certain these things go in dry, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in. I was looking for some kind of crazy thing I could use a bolt and push it in. They make seal installer tools that screw into the shaft, and it's very nice to just push them straight in. But this one, I think, is actually just going to tap in really well. So we'll give it a try. I've got a backup seal if I cause a fuss with this one, but let's see if we can get it in without having to cobble together a bunch of tools. All right, the trick is to get it to go in straight. Okay, there it is, just barely started. just feeling around. Looks like it's going in a little bit, not completely straight, so I want to just hit the bottom of it. It's just I have no room down there. Um, I've got a different hammer here. I think it's going to be a little easier to work with. Now the trick to these seals is you need to leave them a little bit proud on the edge here, so you don't bang them in flush. 
Well, while I was working on this and trying to figure out how to get that uh, seal really set in there all the way, this showed up. This is not for this car. This is actually for the Ferrari. That'll be another video. I have to, I have to deal with the steering column and I needed a 36 millimeter crow's foot. Well, just so happens this is going to fit really well. I can use my washer and the bolt and pull this guy in. All right, so I think this is going to be pretty sweet. Look at that. All right, roll that in a little bit. This guy where it needs to be. Okay. Okay, I think that's great. Take this guy off. Well, that was the hot setup. I kind of wish I had it maybe 45 minutes ago before I had to kind of pound it in, but it's in. It's ever so slightly proud, maybe half a millimeter, something like that, which is where it should be. And we're all set. This, is, this was awesome. This worked perfectly. All right, we have our new seal in. That looks great, huh? Now, before you go throwing the pulley back on and getting all excited about that, remember we have to put the rear tin piece in first because you can't put that in once the pulley's in. All right, and that is this guy here. And these were the 10 millimeter bolts that were holding this on. Well, we're all set to install our pulley back in. What I'm gonna do is the keyway in here can sometimes kind of leak, so I'm gonna put a little um, Permatex on that. And then the outside here, I just wanna make sure this is well lubricated, so I'm gonna put a little grease on it, actually, so that it sits into the seal and doesn't cause any issues. Also, I've cleaned the pulley both sides really well get it nice and clean and the reason is that I want to make sure that when I if there are any leaks I'll be able to find them if it's still dirty when you put it on you'll never know so it should be nice and clean all the way around all right we are all set to reinstall our pulley obviously want to line up our woodruff key with our notch now you have to be careful of these keys they can sort of jack and kind of go all over the place as the thing goes on so Keep an eye on it as it's going in, just to make sure that it's going in properly. Well, we've got it set down pretty well. Um, I need to torque it down though. Should be between 45 and 50 pound feet of torque. So I'm gonna have to go get my super special adapter because I can't get a socket in there. This isn't a super high torque application. And since I have my big wrench that works great, but I don't have a socket, 30 millimeter socket, that's, that's short enough to go in there. I have a couple of them that are just too long. I'm gonna use this little guy, which is my torque adapter. This thing is awesome. So I'm gonna put it around the wrench itself and then I can hook my torque wrench to this guy and I can get a proper torque measurement. So we just got a new torque wrench too. These are really nice. They're really easy to read. Um, the torque wrench I had before, um, I have to confess, came from Harbor Freight, but it's a, it was, it's a great torque wrench. I've checked it. It's within a pound foot of what it says. So it's accurate enough. It's just very difficult to read. Um, so I thought it might be kind of nice to get a new torque wrench. I have the smaller one, the baby brother of this one, and it works really, really well. Even at low torque, you can still hear it go click, click, click really well. Okay, I'm gonna set to 45 pound feet. In order to not multiply the length of the actual wrench, you wanna have your torque wrench at a 90 degree to your wrench so that when you crank down on this thing, you're not adding this length. So it comes straight off the bottom. There we go. There's 40 
five pound feet of torque. Okay. Well, this crazy contraption works really, really well. Uh, the only thing I messed up on was to put the car in a high gear, not a low gear. I put it in reverse, and which is the absolute lowest gear. But I was thinking that reverse is the strongest gear, but I forgot that the engine has the most um, torque multiplication at that gear, in that gear. So that was just making it even worse. So put it in a high gear and the engine will have a lot more difficulty turning the wheels. So you're going to get it to lock in better. And sure enough, work perfect. So, all right, our pulley is back on and torque to spec. So you remember all the oil that was on the fan belt. These are the pulley halves and I've been cleaning them as well. They're a little bit schmutzy and let's see, here's the other, the other one. Here we go. So get these things nice and clean, but I can't refit that. There's no way I can refit that belt. That belt is so oil soaked, it's just, it's a really bad idea. So I have a new belt here for the car. It's kind of nice. It's got a Porsche logo on it and a part number and everything. And this is important as well. The old belt is notched. So you can see all the notches in there. The new belt isn't. And it's because of the profile of this. It fits the pulley at the bottom and the pulley and the generator much better. These belts do. The ones with the notches really aren't the correct belt for the car. And I've cleaned the pulleys. I've cleaned the bottom pulley and the top pulley. So we should be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to fit my pulley, the back part of the pulley on. We'll put our belt here. We need to put our spacers on. Now we don't really know because we got a new belt, but we'll go with what we had before just to get started. Put this guy here just to make sure it's on the pulley. There we go. And then this bit goes on here like that. The more spacers you use on the pulley halves, the further apart they get and the farther down the belt will sit in the V and that makes it looser. So we're, we've got all but two of them in there. So that's a good place to start. Um, but you want to make sure you always put the other ones, whatever you don't use on the outside. That's critical. You should always have the same number of shims regardless of what number of them go in between the pulley and which ones go on the outside. There we go. Our big old honking 36 millimeter nut. I've got the car out of gear so I can turn the engine over slowly. There we go. So checking the tension here as we go. How is that? That's not too bad. If you can turn the engine over, and the engine will turn over with the generator up here just fine, your belt is actually too tight. So I think that's too tight. It should just slip at the top of the compression. So I'm going to add one more spacer in the center there and see if that's any better. So here's the deal on belt tensions from John Murr's book that too loose, no juice, too tight, no bearings. So I'd rather have the belt almost slip a little bit than to destroy the bearings inside the generator. Um, you also get a little less cooling. I know it's not just the generator. It's also the fan in the back, but uh, I'd rather not burn out the bearings in the generator. So there's a nice happy medium and it's, you get the belt grabs just fine until it's just the absolute top of the compression and it sort of gives a little bit. And that's where I want it to be. How's that feel? That actually feels really good. Now it should slip a little bit right at the top of compression, but 
since so we've got a brand new belt and everything's been really well cleaned it's actually gripping really well that's about as loose as I would want to go on it anyways I think we'll leave it there so there's a, a bolt in here that we want to lock on just cinch that down there we go that's how that's done well at this point I want to start the engine and I want to see if we've got any obvious leaks if we got our seal back together okay um, I guess I'll be the first to know. You guys will be a really close second. I ran up the engine a bit more just to double check our work there. And there are no leaks as dry as a bone. So woohoo, yay. I think we're good with, the, with that seal. So that's kind of it for this episode. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was maybe a little bit informational. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. A special thanks to our Patreon supporters. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.